believe it. But I've made it to Flensburg. Uh, that in the distance is Flensburg. Of course, in the book, they don't actually have the boat there. They have it a bit further out, which is roughly where I am now. So yet again, a book has taken me to a fantastic spot. Report more in the morning, but I had to get down here. Exciting. Past dike and windmill and still canals, on to blazing stubbles and roaring towns, and at the last, after dusk, through a quiet level region where the train pottered from one lazy little station to another, and at ten o'clock I found myself, stiff and stuffy, on the platform at Flensburg, exchanging greetings with Davis. That's exactly where I am. It's awfully good of you to come. Not at all. Very good of you to ask me. We were both of us ill at ease. Even in the dim gaslight he clashed on my notions of a yachtsman. No cool white ducks or neat blue surge, and where was the snowy crowned yachting cap? That precious charm that so easily converts a landsman into a dashing mariner. Conscious that this impressive uniform, in high perfection, was lying ready in my portmanteau, I felt oddly guilty. He wore an old Norfolk jacket muddy brown shoes, grey flannel trousers, or had they been white, and an ordinary tweed cap. The hand he gave me was horny and appeared to be stained with paint, and the other one, which carried a parcel, had a bandage on it which would have borne renewal. There was an instant of mutual inspection. So maybe we should be dressing the part. A little white sailing cap in order. I can find one. This is Flensburg Fjord. I dozed but fitfully with a fretful sense of sore elbows and neck and many a drafty hiatus amongst the blankets. It was broad daylight before I had reached the stage of torpor in which such slumber merges. That was finally broken by the descent through the skylight of a torrent of water. I started up, bumped my head hard against the decks and blinked leaden-eyed upwards. Sorry, I'm scrubbing decks. Come up and bathe. Slept well? I heard a voice say from aloft. Fairly well, I growled, stepping out into a pool of water on the oilcloth. Thence I stumbled up the ladder, dived overboard, and buried bad dreams, stiffness, frowsiness, and tormented nerves in the loveliest fjord of the lovely Baltic. A short and furious swim and I was back again, searching for a means of ascent up the smooth black side, which, low as it was, was slippery and unsympathetic. Davis, in a loose canvas shirt, with the sleeves tucked up, and flannels rolled up to the knee, hung over me with a rope's end, and chatted unconcernedly about the easiness of the job when you know how, adjuring me to mind the paint, and talking about an accommodation ladder that he had once had but had thrown overboard because it was so horribly in the way. When I arrived, my knees and elbows were picked out in black paint in, to his consternation. Nevertheless, as I plied the towel, I knew that I had left in those limpid depths yet another crust of discontent and self-conceit. Well, that would be the 27th of September, and it's now the 20th of October, 21st of October. So I won't be getting rid of my crust of self-conceit and discontent by jumping in there. Uh, that's for another year. But I would say it is one of the most beautiful fjords. And there are plenty of people sailing. So it may be possible to catch a lift out there. <laughs>